coming um, to our first ever recruiting seminar. Um, we started a partnership with the American Volleyball Coaches Association this year, and part of that partnership was to help spread recruiting information to you guys who needed it. And so we have a great panel here. They're going to answer your questions. Um, we do have some questions for them, and then after that, they're going to open it up. We do have some if you guys don't have any, um, but I would like to introduce Tom Wood. He's at Milwaukee School of Engineering, and we will take it from here. Thank you. Can you guys all hear me? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, my name is Sam Wood. I'm the head women's volleyball coach at Milwaukee School of Engineering. Really. Um, and we'll get the panel started. Uh, we'll just have the coaches kind of introduce themselves, give a little history, and uh, maybe a fun fact. <laughs> uh, Hi, I'm uh, Susie Johnson. I am the head coach at UW Milwaukee just uh, 10 minutes from here, and um, I've been the head coach there for 12 seasons. I've been at the, in, in the um, volleyball program for 22. I was the assistant for 10, so I have some experience as an assistant head. And um, fun fact, um, I am a club coach too, God bless me, and in here are some of my parents here, so they're gonna heckle me. So um, I will pass the mic. Hello, um, I'm Heather Curley. I am the head coach at Brian Stratton College out of Wauwatosa. We are uh, division two for indoor and uh, fun fact, we are starting beach in 2020. Uh, we right now are the only college in Wisconsin to offer beach volleyball. University, uh, coaching both the men's and the women's team for uh, about eight years or so. Um, and fun fact about me, I too am a club coach, so bless my heart and soul. Um, and I got a new puppy about uh, five weeks ago. So Fumes. <laughs> Sweet, thank you guys. Um, so we'll just start off here with, um, we've got four questions um, for you guys that the coaches will answer and then we'll open it up to you guys um, for whatever questions you have. So number one we have, are there any specific academic criteria for your division? Okay, I'll go first. I am um, at a, a division one institution and um, I have, I did go to my compliance director uh, this week to get this information because it's not just a simple answer, but it is, um, there are, for Division One, it's a complete 10 NCAA core courses, including seven in English, math or natural physical science before your seventh semester. So it's a little complicated, but what I encourage you to do is go on the NCAA website if you're curious and there is an eligibilitycenter.org and it's like backslash course list but you can just google this and it will really give you this information and this is just an easy sheet and and if your child is interested in um, competing at the next level there are different and they'll talk about what their eligibility requirements are but it's really important to talk to their counselor so they're aware at least that, that your child is interested in this. And, and a lot of our, you know, my child is trying out over there and, and she's in ninth grade, my daughter. But uh, um, a lot of them are good students anyway, so, but it is important to just check and make sure. Because once they get to where recruitable for us, it's, it's hard to go back. I mean, to go to summer school and that sort of thing and catch up. So it is important to be aware and on that NCAA uh, website, you'll be able to see um, at least for Division I, uh, two, and three. Brian Stratton is an NJCAA, uh, so um, the athletes need to maintain a 2.0 GPA, but certain degrees require higher, so again, same thing. Uh, it's not just cut and dry. Like our nursing program uh, is a 2.5, I believe. 
And so it depends on the program that you're going to enter in, that you have to talk to your academic advisor to find out that information. But 2.0 is like the general uh, GPA to maintain while you're a student athlete at Brent's Gen. Mount Mary is an NCAA Division III institution. Um, so criteria to get into a Division III institution um, is simply being admitted into the institution and the institution is able to set their own um, individual guidelines um, as to what allows a student admittance into their institution. Um, for Mount Mary, the there's a, a bit of a sliding scale, um, but mostly it's about a 2.5 GPA that's unweighted and a minimum ACT score of an 18 or an SAT of, I think it was 960, 970. Um, but again, it's, it's a sliding scale. And then to maintain eligibility once they are student athletes the institution, um, they need to be enrolled in a minimum of 12 <coughs> credits uh, per semester. Um, they are not allowed to drop below that once the semester is started or they become ineligible. Um, you need to maintain a, a GPA of a 2.5, uh, that's cumulative GPA and you have to show progress towards graduation, um, which is typically taken by the previous two semesters of um, passing a minimum of 24 credit hours in the previous two semesters. Awesome, thank you guys. Um, at MSU, we work D3 as well, um, but we're kind of different because we're on a trimester system. Question, um, what are the scholarship opportunities based on your division? Okay, so um, in Division One, there's about 330 Division One um, schools. And within those schools, most, I would not say all, have 12 full ride or you know, full, fully lauded scholarships for their programs. And, um, and if you really kind of do the math and break it down, we average three to four scholarships that we need a year because you know you have a team of you know, maybe 12 scholarships and then we'll carry, for our program, we carry anywhere from two to four to five walk-ons. And so in, in Division One, you're either a walk-on or you're a full ride. There's nothing in between and we're called, it's called a headcount sport. And you'll, you'll see in, in Division One in particular, if, if it's track and field or baseball as examples, they can, they are, um, scholarships are, they can vary them. So somebody could get tuition and somebody could get tuition plus two grand. But in volleyball, it is a full ride or a walk on. So that's really probably important for you to know in terms of that. Now, um, in my program, we have 12 uh, full scholarships. What that, entail, what that includes is, as most do, it's tuition and room and board. And for us, it's the first two years they're on campus. So that's in our um, housing. And um, when they go off campus, they get a check. And then um, any other fees, and then books, all the books, which is remarkable. <coughs> and, um, and for our, our school, our institution also has um, summer school that we will pay for um, as long as it's going towards their degree. And then um, finishing their degree. So let's say they're in uh, education, which is five years, uh, and they're four years of eligibility, so they could then finish school in a fifth year and that would be paid for too. So it's quite an incredible opportunity to get out of uh, play a Division One sport and then leave without any loans, as you know that is and a tremendous burden for most people. So um, 
But that, that is what Division One is. You, you, that, that you could do, you know, when you're researching and looking. I would encourage you to really look at rosters. They are ever changing in programs, especially now in Division One. It's, it's really a tremendous amount of transferring happening now, if you've heard. But that is, um, so rosters are ever changing. So that is something, you know, we, in, in Division One, unfortunately, it's recruiting very early. And, um, but, but because of this transferring thing happening, things can change junior, senior year. So I encourage you to really do a lot of homework and, and, and um, if, if you are interested, if you're a daughter and you believe they're at, at you know, that high of a level. At, uh, from NGCAA, um, I am Division Two for indoor and Division One for beach. At Division Two, we are able, or for both Division One and Division Two, we're able to offer athletic scholarships. We also offer academic scholarships, and we match outside scholarships that you would receive from your school or community. Um, at NGCAA, Division Three, we are not allowed to offer athletic scholarships, uh, but we are able to offer academic scholarships um, as well. And at Mount Mary, 100% um, of our full-time admitted students receive some kind of um, academic scholarship. Um, in addition to they're able, if, if they're wanting or interested in completing the FAFSA information, they're able to stack on um, their FAFSA package as well. I think is Parkside still in D2 school? So I think they also have 12, right? But they can split them up. Eight, I think they can split up one way. So for D2, if anybody's interested in that, homeschool in Wisconsin, D2 is UW Parkside in Kenosha. And they can, they get eight full scholarships that they can split among players if they want, or they can just keep them to the eight, if that makes sense. So if you want to know about D2. Um, Live for the first time, what do you key upon? Examples, height, athleticism, personality, focus, That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, okay, so a lot of, when, when we, I have two assistants. It's incredible to have, I have an associate head coach and an assistant coach. And we work together all the time in recruiting. Recruiting is constant. It's it's all the time. It's all year round. It's exhausting actually, and but it's so important to your to the success of your program. And so a lot of the work we do is before we would go watch live. So when we get to the live, a lot of times we know the 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 group of people we want to go watch, and um, so we already make a cover the height thing, um, and you know was position, the year, <coughs> but for us, uh, for Division One, we're typically recruiting, you know, maybe two to three age groups at a time, which, which is challenging, but we have to sort of figure that out as we go, and, and again, I told you earlier, like the roster changes, so we could be recruiting two people right now for the fall, just because somebody left, or somebody maybe was medically ineligible, or medically declared they can't play anymore, so then they gotta find somebody, so there's a lot of moving parts. Um, so in terms of when we're watching live, that was the question, um, when you're watching in person live, um, there, there's a lot of factors. And one of the things about Division One that I, I feel goes through all sports is, is feet. I watch feet a lot because uh, the movement of your feet and how quick you are at the ground, the, you know, the net height stays the same. So if you're a front row player, if you're a net player, that that height is the height of the net. So that's a critical component of maybe how high they're getting and, and how they are at net play. We, we like to try to win the nets, whether it's blocking um, or, uh, or attacking. And then in terms of like a libero or a back row player, that again is also foot speed, but it's energy. It's it's what are you giving to your team. I don't know if you're watching the NCAA basketball tournament, but, but um, the kid from Murray State, Jay, uh, I can't think of his last name at the moment, but 
he um, is probably a top five NBA prospect. And out of, out of high school, uh, he played with Zion Williamson from Duke. And he was on his team in AAUs, and he's still the only big power five that offered him or wanted to talk to him was South Carolina. And he's from South Carolina. And he ended up at Murray State, which I think is just cool, you know, because I am a mid-major person and I believe in it and um, want to be competitive and want to pick off those top teams. And, and the biggest thing you notice when you watch him, of course, he's an incredible athlete and his feet are incredible and he has great vision, but he made his teammates better. And so one of the things about people when they want to watch him, and that was the first big, huge stage he was on, was to see um, how other people could be if they're going to guard him, because of course you all know that you're, you're my pet too, if you're a fan. Okay, but you know that's not why I'm talking about. It. But my point is, is he makes everybody around him better, and I think that that is an incredible trait. It is hard to see when you're recruiting, but I will tell you that it's an enormous trait. So if you, your child is the best going on your your kid's team, I would encourage you to push that for them, because volleyball is an ultimate team sport. You need three touches. You need to make that work with first touch, second touch, and the finisher. And a lot of times, our finishers that we see have a bit of arrogance about them, and they if they're really, really good. And I, I encourage that to really be a team mentality. I, I really push this with my young people at my coaching club and my college kids to, to really focus on the team. And it is hard to do in this world because it's so competitive and, and you're all your daughters are all competing right now for 30 spots. But I will tell you, to be a great teammate, is it goes a long way, your body language, the way they, you know, we as, as viewers, you know, I was here a lot recruiting at the Badger Region Championships last weekend, and um, I don't think young people understand that when we're recruiters, we're not just watching you hit the ball, we're watching how you move back to your team, we're watching you in a timeout, we're watching you maybe possibly see stalkers, but we, we need, it is such an incredible position I'm in, of importance to get the right people. And I look at character, that gets deeper, so that might not come live, but it might. Because if you walk over, if your daughter walks over to you, and they throw their water bottle down, and they say, get me water, I don't want that kid. Because I'm not getting talked to like that. And so my biggest thing I learned, becoming a college coach a long, long time ago, was I can't change how they were raised. I can't change because they're 18 when I get them. And so I really need somebody with, that's raised with some accountability, high character, integrity, and really wants to work hard. Because because it is hard. It's hard at Division Three. It's hard at Junior College. It's hard, at, it's hard to go to the next level because you might not be the best one. And so how hard are you going to work every day? And you know this, that, that to me goes such a long way because I do believe that that we have the knowledge, it's all I've ever done, is to coach college volleyball, which I think is a really cool thing, but the truth is I better be an expert if this is all I've done for 25 years. So I wanna be able to use my expertise with your child if they're on my team. And so for, for my college student athletes, you know, I, I say that in my recruiting process, uh, of course we want the best athletes we can get, but right now I have the highest character team in all 15 of my on my team right now that I've ever had in my 20 years. And I am so proud of that, but we dug deep. Three years ago we started digging deeper and learning more and asking questions and um, talking to their high school coach, their club coaches, people who might know them, people who are, you know, and that has made a huge difference. It's the, it's the best people I can be around every day and they're working their butts off. So I do see us getting better. And so those are those are qualities I think are important that I do think people forget about. Um, you know, the vertical jump is in there. That obviously we love somebody touching a really, really high contact point, but the truth is you gotta be able to hit it the high point. So if you're touching 10 feet but hit it nine five, well, you know, there's all kinds of pieces to this game that are so important. So I extended this a little bit longer, but I, I am passionate about that part of it, that there are all keys, there are so many keys to this recruitment process. So when we got these questions, and I said when you view an athlete live, I kind of chuckled a little bit just because um, I got hired in May of 2018, and Brian Stratton is just 
entering our second season for volleyball. So I was the very first coach, and in May I was hired, and we had I had three months to put together a team. And by May, as you guys know, most the athletes are taken already. And so it was a struggle at first for me, so pretty much everybody that I got was from Puerto Rico. Uh, <laughs> but um, it was watching, <laughs> watching videos, uh, and that's what I spent the first uh, three months of recruiting was watching videos. I didn't really get to see, uh, well, I'm a club coach too, so I see athletes live all the time, but you know, for me recruiting for college, um, all the athletes that I would look at, you know, were taken. So I had to look at a lot of video and go off of that. Um, but now that I have a full year to recruit, uh, I haven't had a weekend off since December. I've been at tournaments every single weekend. Um, I coach two club teams, and that's one of the big reasons. But I'm also on a, when we're off, I'm constantly watching the 18s and 17s teams and you know, make hard. But what I look for is um, obviously height, body, build are gonna stick out. Um, but as they play, I look at their athleticism, their court presence, effort, demeanor, and leadership. And then off the court, I look for a nice smile, a positive personality, like Coach Johnson was saying, um, dedication to anything that, they're, that they participate in, and supportive parents. So I also was hired very late at Mount Mary in August, uh, so this is my first recruiting class at Mount Mary. Um, the things that, that I look for, um, just being a Division three program, we may not get the best athlete that's on the court, um, and that's just a, a, a realization of the level that that we're at without being able to offer some incentives financially. Um, so we look, we look beyond just their athletic ability and their volleyball talent. And for me, um, a big component, probably one of the top components is body language. Um, how they're interacting <coughs> with their coach, how they're interacting with their teammates, how they're interacting with their parents, um, how they're interacting with the Ian's Pizza guy behind the counter over there when they're ordering their lunch in between matches. Um, all those things are, are huge contributors to, to where I feel that uh, potential prospective student athlete would fit into our program. Um, and the second big component is parents. Um, I will purposely not be dressed in my Mount Mary garb and be sitting in the stands next to parents and seeing how those parents interact with their, with their daughters, um, with the coaches, with other parents on the team. Um, that's, that's a huge, huge indicator on what kind of um, situation I'm getting myself into for the next potentially four years. Um, and so I'm talking about the, um, just the parents being a, a positive contributor. Um, I see a lot of parents, um, sadly, um, being very negative about other players even on their daughter's club team and um, and it's it's quite heartbreaking to be honest and um, and just the interaction with their with their child as well uh, trusting that the coaches are there to coach they, they got it um, I think it can be a little confusing for um, for these young ladies um, at the high school level, even at the college level, uh, when there's multiple coaching going on from the stands and then from the sidelines as well. Um, so those are two big components outside of their athletic ability when I, when I get to view someone live. 
Uh, certainly the resources that are available with, um, with the different recruiting services and YouTube and videos that can be sent electronically is huge. It has certainly changed the recruiting game tremendously um, and affords coaches an opportunity to evaluate just that talent perspective right off of the bat. Um, and if there's someone who they're willing to invest the time um, and resources to go and see live because quite frankly, um, we all have limit, limitations on our time and many of us do work every single weekend um, to go out and see kids and evaluate. So um, we really need to, to, to choose our time wisely. That, that's a, a, a prospective student athlete that we would like to invest in um, taking that time. But the live portion, I would say those are my two two biggest things that, that I look at. Thank you, coaches. I think they covered that pretty well, so good job, guys. <laughs> um, last question before we open it up to you guys. Um, do you have any recruiting advice for parents and student athletes? Well, I'm gonna give a plug for the Badger region here at their table. I picked this up uh, last Sunday when I was recruiting. And it's the Ten Commandments of Sports Parenting. I don't need to read, to, read them all to you. But I thought this was excellent. Who, who came up with these? We probably stole it from someone else. But <laughs> <laughs> we like to share. It's pretty darn good. Anyway, so that's, that's something. That's pretty cool. But um, And this is an incredible region, by the way. Uh, um, Brian Sharkey talked about it, but you know, just over in Illinois, they don't have this. They don't. They don't have this trial. They don't have this. This support in the region. So, I just. I know a whole lot more about what the Badger region does now that I'm a club coach, and my daughter plays club. And then, um, I tried to stay out of this world as long as possible, but she begged me in fifth grade. And now she did not. So, so Denise and I over here, we've, we've been coaching them for a while. So that, it is pretty cool, though. I, I, this team is really neat to coach. But, um, so some advice. I. I um, you know, I think it's, you know, Natalie mentioned emails and emailing and, you know, throwing in a YouTube video. So if you are recording your daughter to be playing um, snippets, maybe seven minutes, not 20. Uh, and, and, and some live play is good too. Uh, so initially, maybe that first email, uh, putting something together like that. Clear emails, uh, not too long, not you know, we don't need to know every club they're involved in and, and everything else. I think it is important to say your year of graduation, because that's how we recruit. We need to know year of graduation. Um, but also uh, the right spelling of the coach's name. Do some research. It's all on uh, the internet. Uh, I get I get called. And my email is different than my name. My email is sketchum at uwm.edu because it's my maiden name. It's the only thing I can keep, right? change everything in our lives when we get married. So so I kept that, and my name's Johnson. So I get a lot of Coach Ketchum, which I think is sort of funny, because I think they just go off of my email, because I haven't been Coach Ketchum in like, I don't know, 20 years or something. So anyway, so doing some research, maybe re even researching how the season went, you know, because you get a lot of the same stuff that you can tell when they copy and paste. So just take the time. It, you know, life has really changed for these, you know, they have no idea, as you know, you're the parents. but. You know, back when I was in high school, you had you, there was a book you could, if you were lucky enough to find, that had uh, all the email or the uh, sorry, no email then. Um, it had it had just like addresses of universities. So if I wanted Florida State, was like I just wanted to go there and I just pick it up, and I had to find Cecile Renau was the coach, and I had to get and you had to make your letter. And it was so hard to make that VHS tape, and you know, probably never even looked at it. And so it is so easy now to do just a little two nights maybe where you spend three hours a night doing the research on these schools. But you know how you can really kind of learn more? Within 10 mile radius of here, there are so many levels of volleyball in college, as, as you can see right here. But we also have, you know, you could go watch live. And we all say we're so busy, but I would encourage you to watch 
to go walk, bring your kids, bring your family. It's a wonderful atmosphere. You know, a lot of people go to the Badgers, but very few people can play for the Badgers. Very, very, very few. And so that's that's all neat. You know, I, I know it's all very cool. My sister played there, so I get it. You know, I went to a lot of games, but I will tell you, it's important to see how good you have to be and be realistic. And that's one of the commandments, is be realistic. And then go watch, just go see, watch us play. I would love more fans, quite frankly, but <laughs> I also think you need to see. And then you can kind of make a better assessment of where your daughter might fall. And I know it is a little bit hard to tell, but it's pretty easy when you go see. And you go to the, your high school, the high school games of your daughter, and, and you watch, and you don't evaluate on the high school stuff, unless they're playing at, you know, the best 10 high schools in the state. And so, you know what I mean? Because it's like, it's like sometimes, well, she's the best one on that team. Well, that doesn't always, it's not always a great perspective. So I think it's important to, to do that background stuff before you send emails out to, the, you know, all the Division One schools in the country and just really figure, figure that part out. Because there's all kinds, I think it is a gift. I think it's the coolest thing to keep, be able to play beyond high school at any level for your child. I just believe it, you have so much support. And really, the initial, our initial job is to make sure your daughter um, gets to be the best player they could be, best person, and graduate. I mean, that's really what we all want. And who, who wouldn't want that support for their child? And so, you know, in my school, we have academic um, advisors just in athletics, and you know, they just have the trainers and the, the nutrition people. It, it's just, a, it's just so cool. But that's that's kind of. What I would say is, is really giving us a plug to come see our teams play, but I think you can learn a lot uh, from that. Camps are also a really good way. They can be expensive, but there's ways. To, nowadays, everybody's offering like one-day position camps and that are, tend to be less money. And getting out, out of maybe that club experience where they want you to go to those camps, I would encourage going to, I mean, I assume you have camps, um, summer camps too. She, they're kind of busy, but they, they <laughs> push <them> the jobs. <laughs> she will say, okay, I'm sorry. But we do have a lot of camps at our school. And, and I have been there 22 years, so it's just like a complete um, different thing. But, but that is kind of a neat way, too, to get some exposure and see and, and, and see kind of learn from a college coach because and, and they tend to hire strong coaching staff. So anyway, I will pick. Okay, so that is pretty much all my notes. Sorry. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Um, the realistic part especially. It's about uh, educating yourself, start as early as you can, um, and take advantage of all the resources. I mean, your, your athletes are here playing clubs, so talk to the club directors, the coaches. A lot of clubs have uh, a recruiting coach that you can go talk to um, and just continue to keep educating yourself, I guess, is and know, knowing the differences between, you know, the like NJCA versus NCAA and the Division One versus the Division Two and the Division Three and just, you know, continuing to do that. Um, I would say first and foremost, just really encourage your daughters to be invested in their own recruiting process. Um, I mean, a lot of times I can certainly tell when I get an email from a parent, but it's signed the daughter's name, and and then I get a response from the daughter and from the same email address, and they're very, very different. Um, so that's always funny, but um, yeah, I mean, it's we get it. Like the you know the the kids, they they've got a lot going on, and they're they're balancing balancing a lot and. Um, possibly the, the parents um, can, can see a little bit more urgency with the process than, than a 15, 16, 17 year old sometimes. Um, so it, it's certainly not, um, you know, it, it, parents being involved in the process is, is extremely important. Um, but take your daughter along with you. Try, try to not completely take the reins on the process. Um, also, when, when uh, you 
are visiting institutions. Um, so the, the process right off the bat, I know, can, can feel very, very overwhelming, and it is overwhelming. Um, there's a lot of institutions out there. There's a lot of different volleyball levels out there, which is awesome, um, but it also can be a little bit um, scary when you look at it in the big picture. Um, utilize the resources that are at you know, your fingertips with being able to do research in the comfort of your own home for institutions. Um, when you are visiting an institution, that is certainly investing your time, your, your family's time, your family's financials, and we certainly all don't have the time to go and visit 200 institutions all over the country. Um, so utilizing the resources that you do have available, there's, there's plenty out there on the websites. There's videos, there's virtual tours, there's um, obviously email connections with more than just the coach, with the admissions counselors, with professors. Um, our, at our institution, our faculty are very involved in the recruiting Did process. Did you accidentally summon me? With, um, uh, with, with students, um, not just the student athletes. Um, so utilizing those resources can, can sometimes um, narrow down the, the searches that you're actually physically going to the campuses. Um, I also encourage uh, a lot of students to visit a variety of universities. Um, you know, everyone, there, there may be kids that have an idea of what, what they're wanting in their collegiate education and the atmosphere that they're looking for. Um, I always encourage them to go visit the polar opposite. Um, for at the very least, you identify that, yep, I am on the right track, that is not what I want. Um, and there are so many different institutions out there from larger schools, to mid schools, to small schools, to private, to state, to four year, to two year. I mean, there's just, to religious affiliations. To, I mean, there is such a broad spectrum. And sometimes you just, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so especially students, uh, prospective student athletes that are, that I'm assisting in the process with, or even those that I am, I am actively recruiting, if they're at the beginning of their recruiting search, um, I really encourage them to, to branch out and look at other institutions. And, um, and then when they're on the visits, have a little preparation as well, even if it's coming up with the five same questions that you ask every institution. Um, that gives you some equal comparables then when you are going back and looking at your institutions and drilling them down even further. Um, so have them be prepared, bring a notebook so they can take, take notes, um, or if it's the parents taking notes for them but the, but the students are asking the questions. Um, but afford them that opportunity and discuss it with them, you know, kind of, um, Prep, prep for it. It's, you know, it, it's a, a good practice for a job interview. Um, you're interviewing us just as much as we're interviewing you, so to be prepared for that is really important. And you want to get the most out of the, the visits or the phone conversation that you have with, um, with the coach or with the admissions counselor um, to, to, to get the most bang for your buck. Um, so those would be the things that, that I would give advice on. It does end eventually, don't worry. They'll get somewhere. That's the cool thing about, uh, about our sport and um, there is an opportunity. There, we haven't even discussed, there's, there's club levels as well at the university. So if, if your daughters have a passion for the sport of volleyball and want to play at the next level in college, there is a spot for them. So that's really cool. Awesome, yeah, that's good advice. Um, what we usually tell parents and student athletes, um, you gotta find the best fit for you. And I think it's pretty much as that simple. Uh, so, can you tell me the 
Bible says, give them the great, you know, go out and try to pull out officers and, you know, do those things. Um, but basically, you're just trying to find that best fit. And don't be scared to reach out to a college coach as well. There's no reason why you can't email me and say, hey, you know, what do you think? Or, you know, I'm pretty good about usually helping out the parents that come to us, but what are some other schools? You know, what are some other engineering schools in the nation that maybe you might be interested in? You know, I'm here to get your kid to play at the next level, whether it's for me or ever. we got to find that best fit. So just kind of keep that in mind and feel free to reach out. I'm sure any one of us would love to help you out. So don't be scared and, you know, find that good fit. Um, we're going to open up to questions from you guys. Um, coaches, if you guys could repeat the question in the microphone we're going to ask, um, we'll get it going. So if anybody has a question they'd like to ask right off the bat. I'll throw one out. Oh, oh go ahead. Go ahead. Got me loud. Um, university yeah. athletes, are you all using it? And should we be paying attention to it? Do you, so I just know our end of university athletes. Do you pay something? So university athlete is free. Okay. Okay, right? You can go in, you put in your free profile. In fact, some events require you to have a, a university athlete account, right? And then you can you can pay, you can do a pay subscription for university athlete. And I think all it gives you is it'll it'll it's a it'll give you if you pay this like eighty dollar subscription for two years, it'll give you all of the emails and things that you were talking about for like all okay. college things. Uh, okay. But but what it does is it kind of drives a parent a little crazy because you have this account and it tells you the number of valuations that you have mm -hmm. and the number of times your profile has been viewed in the last month. Oh, okay. And like, uh, okay. It, so uh, it, it gives you, you these that. numbers, but it doesn't tell you anything. Okay, okay I'll give you it. the question is university athlete, should you be using it? I will tell you from our end that it's what we use and it's right. I'm not sure. But, but we, it's like, we have to pay a ton of money, by the way, every tournament. Um, and it's really annoying, but whatever. We, but we, we pay it because this is the way we get information on everybody. And, and then for our, our staff, we all have uh, Coach 1, Coach 2, Coach 3, and then all of our notes go into this. So we can then, and my sister recently changed jobs, and she's a college coach too, and they get all the stuff the last coach has said, and then the coaches where she was get, gets that information. So it's really, really helpful. On your end, I would encourage you to realize this. So right now, MEQ is going on in Indianapolis. It's um, a big, big event. Right, we were at MEQ last weekend. Last weekend, weekend. okay. So all these people go, and we navigate our recruiting calendar. I have, a, I have a staff member there right now, one of my assistants is recruiting there. And you kind of go through, this is who we need to watch. But if you're going by a court and you just see somebody, and let's say I just go by a court and out of the corner of my eye, I see somebody, this is what we do. Boom, you hear the pop of the ball, and, it's like, and then you turn. Now, that could be somebody I just put in. And now, now that it looks like, you know, so the truth is, is don't get real caught up in how many times we evaluate because, you know, they said they're out every single weekend. They have to, they have, to have some source of, that's a new thing with university athletes that you get to see this stuff. I, it's yeah, probably, it's really, it's it's probably really bad. odd because uh -huh. you do, all you see is numbers and no one tells you what it means. Or and, what and don't, but don't take too much stock in it because okay. because it it doesn't really until you get you know you could reach out again. We just talked about this reaching out to the coaches, but a lot of times and you know some schools send out tons and tons of emails to uh, encourage people to look at them, and then it narrows it down, and it narrows down, and narrows down. And so in terms of, uh, I understand that because, you know, everybody wants their daughters to be recruited, but the truth is, is that doesn't really matter a whole lot until you hear from that school, or you get a little more of a substance kind of email back. Does that, it, I, I'm gonna let them talk too, but that, that's what I would say, because it's a, it's a crazy, crazy world. Okay, so keep it updated, but don't, I would say don't, don't if, if you can, just like try to not worry too much about that part. No worries. Um, 
Um, so yes, university athlete it can be quite expensive when you um, add up all the tournaments. And so at Mount Mary currently, we do not use a university athlete just from um, a budgetary uh, perspective, but I have used it in the past. And it certainly is um, a tool that has evolved over the years. Um, so yes, I think that, like Susie was saying, the important thing is to, to keep the information um, accurate and up to date. And it's, um, it's just one, one tool, one resource for the coaches. Um, so. They, they kind of monopolized Division One. We're, we're all just, everybody has their phone. And if you see these at these tournaments, they look great. You know who the coaches are. Well, you know the guys are. They have Lula, the pants on, Joe, and Harry. They're standing there and they're pretty tall. I, I make fun of them all the time. Except for Craig. <laughs> does he have Lula, the pants on? No. He doesn't. <laughs> Her husband's that crazy. So it, um, I just make that joke. I just like to generalize. But, um, but it is our job to win volleyball matches. I mean, that's what, what, what I'm supposed to do. So, so we're, it's our job to go around and look and and, and formulate your list, and what we, I think we're pretty good at being fairly realistic of who we want to target, but but we have to have like make our net pretty big for at first, and then it has to, you know, you get to where you can narrow it down. Thank you. It's a good question. Any other questions? All thrown out. Can you guys talk about what we were talking about before about someone being kind of between levels where they could be. On the, on the roster at one event or at one school, but a starter at another school, and how to kind of work with that? Tom had a good story earlier. So we yeah, so, so the question is um, like how to judge like where to go, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, and I've, I've recruited in the past, and I've had a few players who um, will take like walk on spots at like a D1 school. by the time we get to that point where I'm really like investing in what I spent probably three or four years with you already. And so I'm always curious to see like, cause I'm happy like, congrats, you made a D1 program. Let's see what you're doing. And I watch these kids sit there for four years and never play and never do anything. And, and I go, man, like I spent three years talking with you, talking with your parents. And I told you like, hey, for us, you would probably start for four years. As a matter of fact, I can probably guarantee it that you'll start for four years, and you know most of the time we don't do that. And I've seen that happen. Oh man, probably at least double digits now in the five, six years I've been a coach at, at the college level. And so all I would say is, like Susie said before, get out and watch some matches. Like especially if you're anywhere close to Milwaukee, there is D three, D one. You know everybody's here. Parkside's down the road. Within a half hour, you've got probably 10, 12 college teams that you're going to watch on any given night and see what's going on. And you can see the level. I mean, you'll see it right away. And even if you're just looking at going somewhere or just to see if you can play in college at all, it's a great place to go check it out. Plus, it's fun. I mean, our games are pretty fun. I know all of the team games are, are usually pretty fun. So um, it's a good way to kind of get out and see rank yourself even in that aspect. And so, and don't, I would say, kind of don't forget about all the different options. That's why I said, you gotta find the best fit for you. You know, maybe that walk-on spot at UWM is what you want. You wanna be a part of that, you want that, that experience, and there's nothing wrong with that. But also, don't forget there's other places where maybe your experience might be a little bit different as well. So just keep in mind, keep open-minded with that, that there's a lot of schools out there. So find that best fit. And I do think that it, it's a very personal conversation to have with your daughter about that. We're, we have a similar person who he really wants to currently walk on for me. So that's how the topic came up. But he's like really like irritated. But then I had another story about something. He went to Kentucky. Who I kept her cell phone number on my phone for four years. So weird that she was going to come back and she never did. And she wasn't. She she was on their on their team. 
had a wonderful experience from, from what I understand and, and, and didn't get in the game very often, but that's what she was okay with that. And she would have changed my program. And so that sort of is what happened. It, it does happen quite a bit. Uh, we uh, encourage, you know, I, I don't think you can ever really know exactly if you're gonna, your daughter's going to play in a game because I don't guarantee playing time ever when I have recruits. But I think there's a realism that comes with it. And, um, and so I do have quite a few walk-ons currently on my team. One in particular is a freshman and she was recruited by a lot of Division III schools, and her goal since she was real little was Division I, Division I, and that was um, very important to her. And she is and will make an impact, and she's a defensive specialist, and she will. She'll, she'll make an impact. She's so committed and, and, and working really hard, but that's just something she wanted. In fact, I'm friends with a Division III coach who really wanted her, and two weeks ago we were recruiting together, and. She said, so I'm still so mad that she's with you. And I, I mean, it's just conversations we have because we're competitive people. Uh, but I have that same thing. I want all the badge of bench, you know? What the heck, you know? Why wouldn't I? So it's just the way sort of our world works. Um, but again, I will reiterate what Natalie said too about the, the levels. And if your daughter, I mean, the last match of their high school career, whether, you know, club or whatever, high school, um, we have a club team at our school too that is just very, very competitive. And um, so there are kinds of lots of kinds of ways to play this great sport. But I will tell you a little story about me, and I didn't play club because Badger Region has 521 uh, teams in Badger Region. I mean, it's incredible. It's like, uh, uh, Jen told me it was like top 10 in the, in, in the nation, which is incredible. But I'm gonna tell you, and this is aging me, but I still think I don't look that old to have this experience. But there was two teams in the whole club teams in the whole state when I was in high school, and so I didn't play club. I played three sports, and so my whole thing when I was like 14 years old, I said I'm playing Division One something, and I played three sports, and I had that goal in mind, and I thought, darn it, I'm going to do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it, and I just I just went to a camp, and I got I got recruited to play volleyball, and I got offered a a full ride, Division One, and I just went. And I lucked out big time. I think I am very lucky, and I went all the way to Idaho from Racine, Wisconsin, and had a wonderful experience, but I think that is, that is to me, it's like, it, you can go up both ways. All you need is one, you know, or you do all this research, and, and you can, it can go any which way. I would say don't panic. Try to enjoy the process. Typically when we have visits, people come on visits, families come, they're totally stressed out about this whole thing. And I try to just tell them to relax and just try to enjoy this process because the, the cool, coolest part about this is your daughter is good enough to go to the triad, to make a club team, to be on a high school team, and enjoy this sport. And I think it's an incredible sport. So that right there is a bonus. And I think it's really easy to get caught up in this really crazy world. And if you could just take a breath and enjoy this. And you're here already to learn. I think it's incredible that you're here to learn from all of us. And I appreciate you listening to me because I can go on for days about this because it is what I've, the, what I've done. And I think it's just a, a really cool sport for them to be able to play. Sure, so I'm a junior college, so we're two year. And um, what's cool about, uh, well at Brian's track, because we're D1, or D1 and D2, is that we can offer athletic scholarships. So you have two years that you're not only playing volleyball and you're on the courts, but you're also getting your schooling paid for. And then I'm working with my sophomores currently, well, in their second season, so they're all sophomores. But, <laughs> um, but there's a couple of them that their dream is to play D1, and they can still accomplish that. They play two years for me. They're seeing lots of court time. I'm in contact with the coaches that are their dream schools. Those coaches have contacted me back. They're gonna come watch some matches, and um, hopefully they move on. Uh, we do have programs that are bachelor's degree, but because we're NJCA, you can only play sports for two years. Um, so that's a good thing too about junior colleges. You know, you're seeing the floor and you're playing at a collegiate level 
and we scrimmage uh, for your colleges, and our matches are just as competitive, even though we're a junior college. And so you're, like I said, you're on the floor, you're getting schooling paid for, and then I work with college coaches at, with like Coach Johnson, Coach Wood, Coach Boyle, you know, actually, in fact, we've already communicated about some players that she may pick up, hopefully, next season. So, um, so don't rule out that either. I feel like a lot of people will put me down here, and so, you know, I wouldn't rule that out. Yeah, I'll give a little plug for junior colleges. Um, so until I got into college coaching, I did not know of the world of junior college volleyball. And it is a huge, tremendous resource um, as now a college coach. But when I was going through the recruiting process, I, I did not know that that world even existed. And oh, what a world it is, I love junior college. Um, so certainly I would love your athletes to come right to me um, right off the bat, but um, the junior college route is uh, definitely a, um, a valuable route to, to go. Um, but I was just gonna add a story um, as well about kind of those maybe in-betweeners there. And um, you just, you never know what opportunities are gonna um, open up and present themselves. And I've had a handful of um, student athletes that have come back my way, um, that I've recruited when they were in high school. They chose to go a different route, whether it was Division One, Division Two, um, and somehow, some form or fashion made their way back to me. They for whatever reason, their experiences weren't exactly what they were hoping for. Um, and certainly those, those athletes, those handful of athletes, they were game changers in my program. Um, they were the, the top tier kids, the cross my fingers, I hope I get them. And um, so for me, there's, um, you know, there's, you never know if they'll make their way back around to you. So for your daughters um, that, that narrow their decisions down, um, just, just encourage them to, to keep those schools that they, that they still did have high on their list just kind of in the back of their mind. Um, certainly when I'm recruiting a student athlete, as I'm sure all of us can attest to, our goal is to have them compete for us for four years or however many years they have remaining to compete and then graduate from, from our institution. Um, so we, we don't ever want any of our kids to leave our program. Well, maybe, maybe sometimes we might. Well, maybe. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, we, we never recruit a student athlete in mind with the idea that um, I only want them for one year or two years. We, we want them to, to compete for us for the duration of their time and uh, graduate from our institution, but the reality is that that doesn't always happen. Um, so just to, to have your daughters keep that list kind of always um, handy, because you can forget very quickly. Go to <laughs> I traveled as far as Puerto Rico to go to them, but uh, I've traveled around here to go to them to other states. So I, I mean, I, I don't think that you need to go to all of them, but I don't think it's a waste. Um, a lot of those showcases too will identify the universities that are attending. 
um, ahead of time. So I would I would make the suggestion to kind of view that list and see if it's um, one that hits a handful of schools that that you are interested in and would like the coach to see you at. Um, and it can be a good opportunity um, just, you know, a night before a tournament. Um, certainly there's an additional expense there with hotel and uh, accommodations with work and whatnot, but um, to, that you're not having to go like completely out of your way. Uh, you can couple it with a tournament that your, your daughter's club team is already attending. Um, but I, I go to them as well. I think exposure is important. Uh, you know, it, a lot of it too depends on what uh, tournaments your your daughters are, you know, what club team, club programs they're in and what tournaments you go to, and that's exposure in itself. And then I have a friend whose daughter is playing 16s and they're in Chicago, but uh, she does, she tends to do some of those showcases too. So I think it's kind of all over the map. Um, I would encourage you to talk to your daughters too about how they, how they respond in these types of trials, how their body language is, you know, what, what their error response, that's just a very important phrase to talk to your kids about, how they respond after an error. Um, we talk about that a ton right now in my college team. Uh, in fact, they got a big lecture about it last weekend at Paul. We got a spring tournament, we can compete in the spring four times. And, uh, and the error response is, is not great. And um, in general, with young people, especially females. And so, you know, that's kind of something that can tag into this showcase thing. I think they, th there was just one last weekend. I thought, wasn't there one last weekend? There was one. Maybe at Bluegrass in Kentucky. Did you go to Puerto Rico in December? Oh, wow. I wanted to go so bad. <laughs> I was thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know. I, was it good? Late November, yeah, okay. Anyway, so, um, but it is really nice that you're here, and I, um, feel free to ask any questions. I'm here because my kid's here, so I'm still here. If you have any questions, you just wanna come up. But, um, yeah, Thank you guys for coming, and like I said, don't be scared of us. Um, ask questions, email me, email any of us. I mean, I'm more than, more than willing to help anybody out with Okay, I can help you through that process too. I have no problems with that. But thank you guys for coming. If you have any other questions, please feel free. Um, one other thing I wanted to add um, yeah. round of applause for our parents. <laughs> Please take a look at our website, badgervolleyball.org, underneath the indoor tab, and juniors will see ABCA recruiting tips. Um, take a look at that, and thank you everyone for coming. <laughs>